Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews with one of the cheapest HDR monitors that I've seen from any big brand. I'm not talking like cheap AliExpress style brands, no, an actual brand with actual customer support and warranties and people you can rely on. So this right here is the BenQ EW277 HDR, so high dynamic range, and it supports the HDR10 standard. Now, as usual, I'll start with a physical overview and then I'll discuss the features while I'm doing that. So, as the name 27 implies, it's a 27 inch display with very thin bezels, actually. I'm really surprised by how thin the bezels are and it even creates this little notch effect in the top with my webcam on top of it because the bezels are so thin and I kind of like it, you know, it's really cool to have a decent computer monitor with thin bezels. So, the stand is a combination of plastic and fake brushed aluminium or aluminum, however we're going to call it today, let's just call it aluminum because that's the real name. And it doesn't really offer any support really, you can't raise it or lower it, you can't swivel it, the only thing you can do is tilt it ever so slightly, but it's not really enough to be actually usable, which is why I have it on a little um, monitor razor from Ikea, this thing is like 30 euros, so it's kind of handy to have, because the monitor itself doesn't support you know, vertical adjustment. It also doesn't come with a visa mount or vase mount, and that's a bit of a shame. Port selection then, you actually get dual HDMI inputs along with a VGA port. And this is a really weird one to me, I would even prefer a display port or even a, a DVI port would be better than a VGA port. Now I get it, people with really old computers might upgrade their monitor and they buy something like this and hook it up over VGA, but really, should you be using a VGA port on an HDR display? Probably not, right? This monitor also comes with built-in stereo speakers. When you look at the bottom of the display, you'll find another little black bar and that has a light sensor. This display will actually adjust its brightness and blue light depending on the ambient lighting, which is great for your eyes. It helps you get better sleep at night, at least for me it really does an enormous job. I usually run the Windows night light mode. With this one I just have it on automatic blue light reduction and automatic brightness adjustments. And it's wonderful. I just want every single monitor in the world to have this sort of technology because it's just amazing. You don't notice it. It's very smooth transitions. There are quite a few buttons. They're all underneath the display. And the bigger one, that's the power button. It also has a little LED in there so you can see when it's on or when it's in standby. There are also two customizable buttons so you can map those to just switch between profiles. I'll talk about the profiles in just a second. And the other buttons are there for, for example, toggling the HDR on or off. So if you run a other profile and you want a fake HDR, you can do that with that little button. It also has the button there to adjust that blue light reduction uh, on the fly. Uh, again, great to have. Talking about the menu system then. The menus are, I'd rate it a solid 5.5 out of 10. It's not that great to navigate. They're not you know, the most intuitive controls in there. And sometimes you do have to search for quite some time in order to find the setting you want. Once you get to know the menu system a little bit, it's actually really helpful. There are a bunch of um, preset color profiles and you can also create your own profile, of course. Now, as I said, this panel is an HDR panel. And personally, I didn't really use the HDR mode because I found that it would give a really um, warm yellowish color to it. Instead, what I have been using is the Rec. 709 setting and then applying fake HDR on top of that using the fake HDR mode. And that actually gives me a really contrast rich uh, image. It actually goes up to 3000 to 1 contrast ratio, uh, which is great. And images just look really good using that mode. You can use the other modes, but I found basically all of them except for sRGB and Rec. 709 to be a little bit too warm and there's not really an easy way of adjusting the color temperature. Moving on to the panel itself then. Now you might expect an IPS display, sadly this is not an IPS display. It's a V8 panel with LED backlight. Now backlight bleed is very minimal, basically perfectly fine, totally acceptable. You don't ever notice it um, because there basically is no real backlight bleed. Colors are very rich, they're very vibrant, well saturated but not too much, again using this Rec. 709 profile which I recommend everyone to use with this panel. 
and overall the panel looks really good. Now, for the gamers out there, this is not for you. The panel runs at 60 hertz. I was able to overclock it to 76 hertz using EVJ's pixel clock. I'll link that in the little description below. It's a great little tool, and that way I was able to add, you know, 60 more hertzes to it, which really helps with the gaming experience. But it's not a gaming panel. This is more for enjoying content, and that's my next big point in this review. Being an HDR panel, you need HDR content, just like back when 4K panels came around, we needed 4K content. And the thing is, it's still hard to find 4K content. Now, this is only 1080p, but it's HDR. But try finding HDR content. It's really difficult. And to add to that, unless you're using an Xbox or a PlayStation to play 4K HDR Netflix or just 1080p HDR Netflix, you're gonna re need some really specific hardware. My PC right here, for example, can't play HDR natively with the current graphics card. So you need a seven series or higher or newer, basically, so seven or eight series Intel CPU, or you need an NVIDIA 10 series or newer GPU. I have neither of those because I'm on AMD. And that's a big issue for me personally trying to use HDR. So I swapped in the 1070 Ti to try HDR. And while it looks amazing uh, when using proper HDR content, I found Netflix content to not have a good enough bitrate to really use it with. YouTube was very similar. And to be honest, Windows support for HDR is horrible. You have to go and manually set HDR every single time you want to watch something in HDR, because if you leave it on, everything will just look completely washed out. Same when you're editing videos. If you're editing a standard dynamic range video, you have to swap. If you then go to HDR editing, you need to go to HDR again. The implementation in Windows really isn't all that good for people trying to use HDR. And that's a real shame because the panel itself is actually really good. It's one of the better monitors that I've had, especially at this price point. Guys, we can't forget this is only a 250 euro monitor. Now, say you do have an HDR compatible media player, you're gonna love it. Um, if you like watching content, or if you, for example, want to hook an Xbox up to it and your laptop, you're gonna have an amazing experience because the panel itself is really good. It's very accurate, no backlight bleed, great contrast, no color shift, the viewing angles are good because it's a VA panel. Now, I personally would love to see an IPS display, but at this price point, I kind of understand that it's not possible. Um, so other than that, I can't really complain about image quality at all. So then to conclude this video on the BenQ EW277 HDR. The build quality is good, but I would like to see a Visa mount. 27 inches is as high as you want to go on 1080p, but it actually looks sharp enough and you can adjust sharpness in the HUD if you really want to. The HUD, however, is not as intuitive as you would perhaps like. The panel itself is actually really nice. It's bright, it's sharp. It's well saturated, but not too much. And it comes with a bunch of color profiles, so you can easily swap depending on the work you need to do. If you're into media consumption, you're going to love it. It looks good in standard dynamic range with standard video, and it looks amazing if you have hardware capable of playing HDR video. I think for the price, 250 euros, it's a bargain compared to non-HDR monitors because it's maybe not something you can use today, but it's a really handy feature to have for the future. So I would definitely recommend this monitor to everyone who's not a gamer. If you are a gamer, you can overclock it slightly, but it's not going to be a G-Sync 144 Hz display. So guys, if you like this video, please press that like button, hit that subscribe button, and please hit the little bell icon as well so you actually get a notification when I post a video, because YouTube sucks and I'm not getting any views on these videos at all anymore. Um, if you want to ask a question, there's a common area for that. So I'll try to reply to all of them and at least I'll read every single one of them. Um, if you want to get more frequent updates and beautiful pictures, that sort of stuff, which I edited on this monitor to make sure the colors are okay, there's an Instagram link in the description below. And if you want to really support this channel with better audio, lights, lenses, camera equipment in general, there's a Patreon link so you can support the channel like the awesome people on your screen right over here. I might put them over here, who knows. Fernando, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.